Okay, so um, <laughs> I have some news that is kind of shocking yet not. So I was diagnosed with a hypermobile type of EDS or Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome about four years ago and at that time we didn't know much about EDS and we, I was diagnosed by a geneticist so we had no reason to doubt that. At the time there were only six known types of EDS and now there are I think 13 or 14 and all of them can be genetically tested for. Um, except for one and that is the hypermobility type and so I'd never had official genetic testing because it wasn't necessary like the hypermobile type is diagnosed through a clinical examination and that's what I was diagnosed with over the past two years my body has just taken a nosedive like I continue to get sicker and sicker to the point where we kind of started to wonder hmm I don't know if this is actually the hypermobility type. My skin was super fragile and stretchy and thin and just velvety soft um, and it started tearing which like I would put on my VOG mask so I can breathe outside and not go into anaphylaxis and just the pressure from the ear masks would like slice my ear up like that and I would have to literally glue my ear back on with liquid bandage. So many times that happens to me. Um, I will lean my elbow on something. I was in the emergency room one time and I leaned my elbow on the gurney, like the railings on the gurney, and just the pressure of my arm slid open my elbow. And whenever I have surgery, like my skin does not heal back together. Like I will get my stitches taken out and they will just, my incision will pop right back open and they'll have to like fix it again. Um, and of course, I have so much more organ involvement than I did. When I was originally diagnosed, I was eating just fine. I didn't have gastroparesis. I did have POTS, um, and I wasn't struggling super much with mast cell. I did have it, but it wasn't like terrible at that point. Um, and I was still dancing and figure skating, although that's the doctor that made me quit figure skating. Um, but I was still dancing because I refused to give that up. I was still in school. No, I wasn't in school actually. So many things have changed that we're like, you know what, I don't know that I really have the hypermobile type or HEDS. The new diagnostic criteria came out for the hypermobility type and one of the criteria was or the absence of skin extensibility and fragility, which means basically if your skin is super stretchy or super fragile, then that warrants testing for the other types and consideration for the other types because that is not necessarily I mean it can be it can go along with the hypermobile type um, and I know of people that have the hypermobile type with st stretchy fragile skin um, but depending on the severity it is likely that it could be another type and so when that came out I'm like all right we need to go back to genetics and have the official testing done because one type of EDS called the vascular type is life-threatening and can be fatal. It is very, very dangerous. And so I started to get super worried about that. Like every single night for the past year, I have wondered like, do I have vascular? Are my gonna wake up in the morning? Is my heart just gonna burst while I'm sleeping? Like, and I know that seems a little dramatic, but that can happen with vascular type. Like organs can spontaneously rupture and they worry a lot about your heart because your aorta can just dissect which basically means like tear or like kind of burst um, and you'll bleed out inside in minutes and it's very very scary because I didn't have proof that I didn't have it my brain was like well what if I do and so every single night for the past year I have wondered do I have vascular and basically we just had enough and I was like, okay, we're going back and we're getting this testing. Like I pushed and pushed and pushed for this testing. And after I started going to Mayo and we switched all my care over to them, 
they recommended that I see genetics and one for the EDS testing and also for a couple other things. Um, and we finally went to see genetics and we got the genetic testing done and it took about three weeks to get back and it was just blood work and they were testing me for all the types except for the hypermobile type because there is no identified gene so there's not a way to test for that yet um, they're working very hard on figuring that out but um, those results came back today and I was kind of shocked. As soon as I got those back, I was like, I need to film a video, like today. Like I'm not even waiting until tomorrow. I'm gonna film it and edit it tonight and put it up. Like I don't even care, I'm not gonna get ready. I don't, I'm too exhausted to do my makeup to get ready. Like I'm dealing with a bad injury right now and recovering from another bad injury, hip injury, back injury, M moving on. So we got my genetic test results back and I indeed do not have the hypermobility type. I have classical Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Whew. One, I am so relieved that I don't have vascular type. Two, I am so glad that I pushed for that testing because my original diagnosis was wrong. I, did, I do not have hypermobile type, I have classical. And if I wouldn't have pushed for that testing, I would have never known, like, I would never know. So yeah, I have classical EDS. I'm kind of shocked, like, the shock hasn't really worn off yet. Even though I suspected that it might not be hypermobile type, in my brain I was like, it's probably just gonna come back fine, it's probably just gonna come back fine, it's probably gonna come back negative and you just have HEDS, and I was like, fully expecting that like suspicious but fully expecting it to be normal and when it came back saying i had classical i was like what just shocked um and also it was strangely validating like i have never been able to have genetic proof of what is making me sick. I have seen so many doctors and nobody's ever been able to give me like a genetic reason. Like I've been diagnosed with lots of things, but we've never been able to find the cause and prove it. And I have genetic proof. I have proof. I know exactly why my body is so sick. I know exactly why it's so sick. And I've never had that solid of answers before, ever. And it's also very validating because no doctor can ever doubt me or question me or like judge me again because I have proof, like I have genetic proof. And like not saying that people with hypermobile type are like, they don't have a legitimate diagnosis because they do. I don't even have to wonder. I know for 100% certain what I have. My results came back and I have a mutation in the COL5A1 gene, which is one of the collagen proteins or something. I don't remember if it's missing or if it's just uh, mutated. I believe it's just mutated, but that is the cause of all my problems. Everything stems back to that. And you know, not a whole lot's gonna change. I mean, I have to have more surgery protocols which will be nice because in the past my surgeons haven't really understood and that makes surgery awful um, and so hard on my body but now I'll have like protocols which is nice um, and I mean I have to, I think I have to get heart scans a little bit more frequently just because the classical type does put you at risk for a few heart problems but nothing like the vascular type I don't know I'm trying to put my thoughts together and I'm really just shocked. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that in this video, but I am, it's the truth. I don't wanna make this a super long video, but I will definitely be making another video in the future kind of explaining all of it. Um, but as of right now, I don't even know all that much about it. I have a little bit of knowledge about all the types, but the majority of my knowledge was about the hypermobility type because that's what I thought I had. That's what I needed to know about. And so I'm going to continue to do research and all this other stuff. And I will make another video explaining all of it to you guys. But I just, I had to share this with you. Um, and it's so odd to think that I was misdiagnosed. It's just crazy. Um, 
but this does mean that I almost for certain got it from one of my parents and we are pretty much certain it's my dad um, because EDS kind of runs heavily in his side of the family. My entire family now has to be genetically tested for the classical EDS because it is incredibly hereditary just like all the other types so all my family except for my adopted sister is gonna be tested because you know I doubt she has my genetic condition <laughs> and all the other people on his side of the family who have EDS and were diagnosed with hypermobile type were like hey go get the testing right away <laughs> so yeah I mean I'm just figuring all this out I don't have anything else to say <laughs> and the other thing is like well I do not agree with this at all there are a lot of people in the chronic illness community right now who are invalidating or doubting other people because so many people are being diagnosed with EDS right now and a lot of people are kind of ignorant and they forget that it's a spectrum disorder. Some people will have a very mild case, I have a very severe case, and there's everything in between and some people in the community are saying if you have that mild case well you can still do this so you must not have BDS and that's not true but so many people are being harassed and bullied saying like wow another person with EDS like and people aren't believing them and they're being horribly rude you know I've always kind of worried that somebody's gonna do that to me because I have quite a large following and so Harassment like the more people that follow you the more likely you are to get hate and you know I've always just kind of worried like I really hope somebody isn't mean to me about that and now like Nobody can ever doubt my diagnosis like not me my family my doctors or people on the internet Nobody can ever tell me that I don't have EDS and as silly as it sounds like that's just something I worried about and you know I deal very well with the hate which I get surprisingly little of like very little hate um, but you know it's always been in the back of my mind like I've been afraid of that and putting yourself out on the internet that's just something that comes along with it and you have to accept that these are just my personal feelings Whew. so I'm gonna do my research stay tuned for more videos on this topic don't forget to follow me on Instagram at life with stripes I update you guys every single day on there so I know that I will be posting on there a lot more about this before I do it on YouTube because it's easier so don't forget to follow me on there if you want more updates and you want to chat and hang out I do try to respond to you guys as much as I can um, so that's that's a much easier way to kind of get to know you guys so thanks for watching this video and putting up with this crazy last-minute unorganized video so <laughs> I'll see you guys next time Bye.